The Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops issued a long-awaited apology over its role in Canada's residential schools. It reads in part, We acknowledge the grave abuses that were committed by some members of our Catholic community. Physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual, cultural, and sexual. It goes on to say, we also sorrowfully acknowledge the historical and ongoing trauma and the legacy of suffering and challenges faced by Indigenous peoples that continue to this day. Part of the apology is a commitment of $30 million towards healing and reconciliation. But where will that money come from? Bishop William McGratton is the Vice President of the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops. He is also the Archbishop of Calgary. Bishop McGratton, good to have you on the program. And I want to start with the, the apology. People have been asking for that for years. Why did it take so long? Well, we met in plenary, which happens once a year. Uh, and so this past week, uh, all of the bishops of Canada, uh, and we, in coming together, uh, many of us have made apologies in our various dioceses and regions. Mm -hmm. But at this plenary, uh, the um, suggestion and the the need for us to sort of, with one voice as bishops in plenary, uh, make this apology. And so it was an unequivocal apology. It was one that recognized the, the history, uh, the pain and the suffering that the, the residential school system caused, and also our participation in it uh, as a Catholic church. What is that history? What do you see it as? Well, I see it as a history that has been uh, something that our First Nations communities have, have continued to carry. And as it has come to light through the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and also through our own uh, um, history and experience as a church, uh, we realized that that uh, system often created a separation from their culture, uh, from their language, and also spirituality. And so that is trying um, right now among our First Nations is to be reclaimed. And I think our Canadian country needs to be more aware that this history has taken many of those very important uh, human and cultural realities away from them. And you accept that that history in, in, is in large part because of the actions of the Catholic Church. Well, a large part as well, uh, the government was part of establishing that system with the um, Indian Act. Uh, and throughout the history of Canada, that um, act also involved certain actions on the part of the government. But that doesn't take away from our participation as other uh, religious bodies, such as the Anglican Church and the United. Mm -hmm. we, we participated to that degree in, in the education of uh, these children in residential school settings. Some people are um, happy, uh, is one word I suppose I could use, to, to see this apology, which they've asked for for so long, but they'd also like to hear one from the Pope directly, and they'd like that to happen here in Canada. The National Chief, Chief of the Assembly of First Nations, Roseanne Archibald, for instance, said she's disappointed that you didn't pass a resolution inviting the Pope to Canada to apologize. And that's something that, that uh, Popes have done in the past. We've seen it in Bolivia, for instance. Why have you not asked the Pope to come here and offer an apology for the Catholic Church's role in residential schools? Well, at this past assembly, this plenary, we did uh, commit ourselves to this uh, recommendation to engage the Holy See and the Holy Father on the possibility of, uh, of an apology and a possible visit. And this is why this delegation of, that has been planned to go to Rome is, is such an important step in that uh, path of reconciliation and that understanding that an apology is very important for our First Nations and our Indigenous peoples. And we want the Holy Father to, to be able to listen, uh, not only to those involved in, in, in the political realities of these communities and these nations, but also the survivors, uh, the youth and the elders. And so we are confident that Pope Francis in, in receiving them and listening to that has in the past, as you pointed out, has been moved to, to make uh, similar apologies. So we are committed to that ongoing discussion with the Holy Father and with the Holy See. We talk increasingly about the survivors of residential schools. 
but only most recently have we started to really talk as a society about those who did not survive uh, in places like Kamloops, but it's not restricted to that one site, as, as you well know. There are records that the Catholic Church has that m could potentially detail uh, further unmarked graves and may provide some information on the identity of those who died and, and were buried. Can you give me a sense of the timeline about when you would be able to release those documents, those records? So uh, with regard to the plenary again, we made that recommendation in our um, apology. Um, locally here in the Diocese of Calgary, I've already met with two of our First Nations communities and shared with them the type of records so that they could understand. We discussed uh, how best to access those mm -hmm. so that uh, families of survivors are able to uh, have access to that information. Um, recognizing confidentiality, but at the same time, we wanted them to know that, that these records are available and how we can help them to access that. So, so could a family bishop come now to you and say, we want to know what happened to X person? Can they come to you right yes. now and do that? And is that the case yes. right across the country? I can't speak for all of the bishops, but I realize that this uh, is an important step of healing and many other bishops throughout Canada as well. Uh, we have records that are, are sacramental, are, are part of the mission of many of these parishes that were in proximity either to residential schools or communities. And we just wanted uh, these First Nations to be aware that, that it is available. And any Catholic or anyone who has been baptized or someone who has lost a loved one and has been uh, buried, they have the ability to access that information as well. I want to ask you about the $30 million pledge lastly. Um, and I ask you because I, I, I'm curious where the money is going to come from. And in the context of there was a, there was a previous pledge of $25 million for residential school survivors but uh, Catholic dioceses across the country were only able to raise a fraction of that, about 3.9 million. So where will the 30 now come from? Well, as you are aware, uh, part of that first initiative uh, was part of a three-phase plan. Uh, you know, 29 million was raised and was given to First Nations. Uh, there was a second phase of, of 25 million of gift in kind, which also was uh, given and uh, accomplished. It was a third phase that dealt with a, a best efforts. And we know that it was disappointing. And so at our plenary, uh, again, recognizing that making an apology is important, but also supporting that with tangible acts and commitments is equally important. And so this is a new initiative. Uh, each of the dioceses and regions have committed to raising these funds locally and also being involved with their communities to talk about where that money can go to best help in projects or priorities or initiatives that will help with healing and, and reconciliation. But, but does that, so, Bishop, just to, just to, I've got to interrupt you. Does that mean that the, the pledged money is aspirational? Like it, doesn't, it doesn't exist right now if it has to be fundraised. Well, it is, in a sense, a commitment, and the bishops have, uh, have made that commitment and have extended that for the next five years that they will, in a sense, be committed to $30 million, and that it will be raised at the local level and allowing the local communities of our First Nations to also be involved and to understand how and where that money can best help them in these particular initiatives. All right. Bishop, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you as well. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.